What is up, Sluggo Squad? This is Druby. I want to welcome you to episode one of Playing With Glass. Today we are going to be making this beautiful exocycler together. This piece is made with none other than Royal Jelly and Telemagenta from Moltnora, some of my absolute favorite colors. We're going to be going through a lot of different techniques on this piece, and I'll be right here with you to explain some of the different steps in detail. If you have any questions, consider dropping a comment and hitting the like button. Big shout out to the homie uh, that ordered this custom piece. Really glad I was able to whip it up and uh, make it so juicy. Uh, it's not too often I get a mess with Molten Aura colors. I generally save them for custom work or um, just when they're requested, you know. So glad to get them out of the arsenal and into someone's hands. Um, it's kind of tricky sometimes with these colors. You got to stir them a little bit. So you'll see me here on the lathe. Uh, just holding one rod in my hand while I'm letting the lathe spin and kind of mixing the color up a little bit um, And then we're gonna do a big old blowout. So It's kind of the only way I do Color prep generally especially if it's colors that leave lines um, when you coil pot or do a stick stack or something Just makes it look the best and trust me, you always want your prep to look the best. It's like the most control you have over your piece at at this point is just getting the prep right. And sometimes colors can be a bitch. There can be colors like slugger bars are t absolutely terrible. <laughs> they have so much gunk in them and just you can use them for sure, but you definitely have to pick them out a whole hell of a lot. And just to make it workable, but it is beautiful color most of the time. Um, and yeah, same thing. You want to do a blowout with those two. Usually I'll end up pulling them down rod size. Uh, maybe uh, a little bit fatter than a rod. Maybe like 10 millimeter. And then blow them out. Um, just so they kind of have their sort of memory to them. Because um, what it starts out with is just absolutely nasty. Moldnora, different story. <laughs> Alright, right now I put it in the 44 by 4 Just basically pulling it down. I'm pretty sure the GoPro died and I didn't get a video of the Telemagenta, but There's all the prep And we're gonna take that little section of Telemagenta and slap her in the lathe And basically this is going to become our booty To the piece. It'll be the bottom section where I flare out and put the perk in too um, and I'm trying to gauge the color right now. Really, I didn't didn't really know how much color I was going to need for this one. Um, so you kind of just got to gauge it how the best you can. You don't really know until you blow it out fully. And that's usually the first step when I do prep like this. Um, you got to then blow it out just to, just to re-even it out. And then it also allows you to know your sizing. Um, and in this video, I actually nailed it. I got the sizing pretty good. I didn't have to remove too much, and uh, we kept most of it on there. So, just going to put a little patch of uh, telemagenta on the top now. And that's going to be the part on the piece that gets sucked in to the exo part. So it kind of gives it that cool little color effect to it. Um, but these colors paired together are just so baller. Such juicy such juicy colors so basically I'm starting with the the foot and really it just starts with blowing out a big old bubble trying to keep it as easy even as you can and then um, I use a uh, graphite rod you can actually see it there to the left uh, for most of my shaping I don't generally like to use paddles too much because it it can leave hard lines or if you mess up it, it really messes up so I like, uh, I like the rods, they seem a little bit more stable and easier for those hard shapes. Especially sometimes when you gotta get in there, it really allows you to get in there. Um, so I'm making the bottom razor sharp, giving that little, little foot a ream. <laughs> Some of the verbs in glass blowing is kind of ridiculous. Reamer! Maybe I'll edit that coffee out. Maybe I won't. <laughs> All right, and then uh, basically we got to blow a huge ass bubble, 
we're going to be making the main bubble to the main piece so it uh it takes a lot it takes a lot of glass to make that big bubble and it's definitely easier if you keep it a little bit on the thick side that way if you do blow it out too big or the shape you're trying to get to and there's not enough glass there oof it's not very fun especially to do those exo holes i like a little bit of a little bit of wall weight so yeah still blown out just trying to get that thing to size there's a lot of glass there that you gotta gotta puff out Get my little tool there it's one of my favorite little cup tools i use it for just shaping any big uh, sphere i don't know what it is actually for i think it's a vortex marble mold but that top rim man the top rim works like a dream <laughs> and yeah i'm just pretty much finalizing the shaping once you get it with the the graphite, it's already pretty close that you can just you can just blow it out normally. And I'm basically gonna take it off, take that little little section of telemagenta off. I'll be using that later for the perk. But yeah, pretty basically we're gonna pick it open and. Uh, switch the side and op flare open the telemagenta booty on the bottom and then we're going to get to making our perk and the perk actually i do the perk on most of my pieces first i know a lot of people actually wait till till the last step to do their perk but in my in my processes i found that it's easier and less sketchy if you do that first just get your little guy in there get your thing in there make it happen because i've yeah, in the past, I used to do it last. Most people build their whole piece, put the perk in, and then start doing all the other stuff. But sometimes the perk is usually the one that's going to fail if anything failed back in the day. Here's a little happy dance for the shaping. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, look at this shaping right here. Ooh, man, I love it. Something about having a lathe and being able to learn how to use it. Alrighty, and then we're on to the perk. Giving it a little measure there. Well, basically, just measure the inside of the rig. And then, uh, yeah, measure a little bit less than that for your perk. Because I put a post on it, so the post has to has to touch the, the sidewall. Um, this is also an interesting perk design. It has a channel going through the whole thing. So it is... Uh, it has the drain going right through the perk, which I, I like. It makes it nice and compact. And this is a kind of neato way to get that center tube welded in there. There's multiple ways you could do it, but this is my way. Pretty much put that bitch in. Make sure you pick off your other side for easy access. And then uh, you're going to want to pick open your other side right here. Yeah, pretty much open that hole. And then you're going to weld on that little post. And then because if you ripped off the other side, you'd create a bomb on the inside. So you got to do all your perk holes next. So I actually pop the the main perk hole. And then all... I, I usually do three hole perks on these. I, I feel like that, that functions the best um, on these ones for oil pieces. Uh, so yeah, after you pop all your little holes, you just ream open the main one. I leave all the other ones closed for now. And then pretty much warm it up. And then you're going to rip off that other side. And the shaping's pretty easy. There's no pressure on that main outside tube. So you just kind of have to go easy on it and just, you know, not heat too much. And that ream that center open. I found you really got to get that inside juicy or else it'll create a, a little hard spot in there. And there's Sophie. Shop cat. It's my little beautiful baby. But yeah, pretty simple. Just a little weld right here and then we're going to finish it off by hand.
yeah, these perks are fun. It took me a while to figure out how to do them, because uh, I used to have this style perk in my Sluggo Cyclers. I used to have this style perk in uh, a few other of my pieces, but never this clean. They've kind of evolved over the years, for sure. Um, pretty much, we're going to just open the rest of the holes. A little stick and snap right there. It's usually how I open holes if there's no air pressure. And you need it open right now. And then at the bottom of this tube, I'm actually popping the drain holes now. So this will be where the water comes through the funnel and exits through these little drain holes on the bottom. And same thing, a little stick and snap. Yeah, after you blow a bubble, just heat a little rod, flatten it, heat it again, touch it, and then kind of wiggle it. You always want to keep it moving just so it doesn't settle too much. And then you just fucking snap that bit. Gets a little squirrely, so you got to do the little... If, if nobody has rollers, I highly, highly, highly suggest getting a pair of rollers. They have... Uh, just change the game completely. You can really tell if anything's straight. Even if you're super confident with your hands, man, it just makes a world of difference. Complete, complete world of difference. Because then you can be sure, like absolutely sure. Just got to make sure I'm measured right. Got all my sizes correct. And then always, before you put something in, test it. That way you know if you need to trim a little bit off or do anything like that. Fix it up. Get to fit in there perfectly. Alright, and we're going for it. Set the perk up. Pretty much make sure that it goes in there nice and juicy, just like we tried before. That way, this isn't the first time you're ever seeing it in, you know, when you're doing a seal. You gotta make sure that... You'll see me multiple times uh, through this video, like, check, check sizing. Uh, so step one to do a no blow perk. This actually took me a while to learn. Uh, shout out Rob. Shout out Gobs Glass. Basically, I do a little little push in, so you kind of touch your seal, and then the next thing is just ripping open that hole. Kind of want to make sure that you don't get it super thick, uh, just so it's easier on the melt in. That's why I kind of did stretch that part out before um, doing the shaping, just so it's a tiny, tiny bit thinner. So basically, once you rip the hole open, you just got to go in there and melt that side wall. Use a reamer a little bit if it gets too low, gets too small. Open that back up. But yeah, really just cook in the side walls. And you'll, you'll see it. You'll see the crease disappear as soon as you uh, melt it all the way in. And it looks really clean. So you, you can definitely tell. It's like, oh, okay, that's, that's not going to crack. And immediately I go right into the bottom, ripping that section off. And then you actually just, I do a little no pressure seal here. So I take my graphite reamer and I actually put it in my perk hole. <laughs> Once I put it in my perk hole, then I give it a little blow. And if I heat the bottom enough, that stabilizes the bottom. And you'll, you'll see it create those, those round edges on the bottom so it's not sketch. And right after that, I immediately go into... Um, patching that hole just take a little tube bloop bloop get it up on there rip it off and then we're gonna melt it in just making sure that everything is nice and stable last thing you want is your perk to just fail <laughs> I, I also will highly recommend to finish the seal try to get everything finished before you throw it back in the kiln and even right here um, I go right to the bottom just constantly reheating. Don't need Bunsen's. Just, just heat with your torch. And there's that graphite reamer again. Basically just making a, making it flat on the bottom while I'm picking out the guga. And yeah, time to flatten that booty. I always have that little post on the bottom. And that is where you'll see me actually open up and we're going to connect up to the bottom and finish this piece. And I do the entirety of most of my work uh, from handled up to the bottom. So 
Yep, just giving it a check there, making sure it's all nice and clean. I can't stand ripples. I can't stand any anything in my bases, especially if you use a graphite tool. Get your tool marks out. It's not that hard. It's just another reheat after your initial heat. So just get it done. Make it happen. Make it clean. I don't want to see nothing on your bottom but shiny, shiny beauty. Yep, basically pick her open. And then we're going to... Uh, Give her a little flare. Just make sure it's stable. Same thing. Make sure it's all melted in and round on the bottom so you don't have any issues. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to put a, back, a big old facet on the back of this like you guys saw. So this is how I actually encase opals. Uh, high oxygen flame. You don't want to burn out your opal at this point. So just keep it hissing for sure. And pretty much just melt it in like you're like you're doing an implosion or anything else. Start from one side, and once it gets there, I give it a little suck. I actually did trap a tiny bit of air on this one, but using the the flatteners there, you could squish out, and you actually see the well, you can't see it, but the the air bubbles actually push right to the side, and then when you skin it, it they just come all right off. It just leaves a beautiful, nice little clean opal. And so, yeah, we just put it on this uh, bigger 10 millimeter rod. We're going to snap it off right there. And then I actually take these and put them straight on the lathe because I've had many issues before of uh, my opals getting crooked in pieces. And that is not what I was trying to do for this beauty. So we're going to take our time, use the lathe, just go slow with it, and try to make everything even. Trying to get a nice little layer over the, the opal. You don't want it too far exposed to the edge. So you gotta make sure you sink it in pretty good. And yeah, pretty much just made it. We're going with a, a big diamond shape on this one. So I made it a big old triangle, big old cone. And this lathe is actually not straight on the tailstock side. So anything I do, I have to do on the, on the headstock but you actually see right here that I switch it to a rod on the tailstock side just because that's how it's going to go. So I got to take it back to the bench and then even it out by hand, make sure that it's perfectly straight. Once again, with the rollers, rollers make things more straight than the lathe if your lathe is crooked. <laughs> the amount of things I actually fix that come from the lathe is quite frequently. And there's a little close-up of the pre-facet. And we're going to get started on making all the pieces that I'm going to facet now. So I can spend a little bit of time while the, the exo holes kind of take a little bit. So I usually do one, then I'll have to wait a bunch of time. I, I usually wait 10 minutes uh, every time in between my steps. So it, it gives me time to do some faceting. Basically, we're going to make the mouthpiece right now. So I'm just pulling down a little bit of that royal jelly. Got a little section of that telemagenta on top. Just really got to make sure you even it out. Because the mouthpiece is going to be one of the things that you look at the most. So it's really got to be clean. And then basically just doing a little Maria right here. I use a paddle and a reamer to finalize my, my shape. Um, it, it allows me to not trap air also. I get it to right before it's about to trap air and then I'll do that shape right there. You can actually see me moving the reamer down a little bit. Um, but that's how I, I collapse it down on itself without trapping any air. Very important. Because yeah, if you see that air ring on a Maria, ugh, it's just nasty. Could have done better. Just got to even out your other side after that. Make sure everything's straight. So once again, this is, it is on the tailstock side, so I do have to go right to the bench um, and even it out. And then you're gonna open that hole. And just get her prepped. Anytime I let things cool from the kiln, I try to have an open hole. I notice it does, I don't know if it's everywhere or if it's just where we're at in the Pacific Northwest, but it seems like moisture gets built up inside of the, the piece if you like, 
let it air cool from the kiln. So, and sometimes they don't go away. So I definitely try to avoid that at all costs. Even at the end of the day, when I'm done with a piece, like, uh, like one of the big exos or something, I'll pop a hole in a convenient spot just, just so when it cools down in the kiln overnight, it doesn't leave a bunch of scum in it. And there's the finished mouthpiece right there. We're going to pop her in the kiln and then wait for it to warm up for a minute and then pull her out and cool her down. We're basically going to now uh, make a ground joint. So prepping everything for faceting just so it can cool and I have time to do parts of the exo while this stuff is cooling down. So once again, a little telemagenta cap on a royal jelly body. I'm gonna put those together. I pretty much have everything already pulled down uh, to size. I gotta reduce it just a little bit more for a ground joint size. I use a little marble mold for that that has, it's just about an inch, so it works really, really well for uh, getting that ground joint part nice and reduced, a little bit thicker. I like to make it a little thick and then ream it out just to size. So it actually looks like we're going straight for the Maria here. Just slowly moving that in. You actually see my move right here. And then you'll watch me move that reamer. Shing! Make that thing shop. Once again, if you see a ground joint that has a Maria with air trapped in it, not good. <laughs> not good. It's just not a good look. Here's that marble mold. Kind of fix that ground joint spot. Just give it that taper that it needs. At this point, we're really just eyeballing it um, to make sure. And then we go and... Uh, fix it on the bench but you can get a nice nice crispy shape uh, before then but also once again my tailstock is crooked on this one so I do have to go back on the bench and fix her up uh, when we're done here Ugh, something about working on a lathe it's just so much fun I highly 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 guarantee uh, that has changed my work a whole lot. I mean, just being able to do what your mind wants you to do without having, you know, issues in the way of anything. And here I am just straightening it back out. Just making sure when I put it on the collet chuck for my faceting arm that it is perfectly straight. So you really, really gotta just make sure. Um, not pictured I'm pretty sure once again the GoPro probably died um, but I switched handles with it and then it's ready for faceting all right we're, we're about to do the the big boy suck in this is probably the sketchiest move on this piece just because it's moving the most amount of glass and you already have stuff in place like the perk and basically we're going to heat it up soupy hot and you got to keep it horizontal, so you don't really want it to go vertical too much when you're sucking it in, um, just because you'll get thick spots in certain areas. But I just heat her up, and then slap her on the roller, and then we're going to give her a nice little suck in. Go slow. Slow is better than fast, for sure. Always. But it really needs a lot of heat. And then I start sucking in. Bink, and you want to go all the way till you touch that bottom post and then kind of just cook it try to get it nice and even take the hand torch get in there and make sure that seal tacks all the way around you don't you want it to tack really good um, so you, you could put it in the kiln right now but you definitely want to open her up kind of do the same thing as a no blow seal at this point um, it's a little tricky to get the flame in there just because there's so much backsplash. So you'll see me kind of taking out little sections, making that hole thinner and thinner, and it actually just popped open right there. So that's like best case scenario. 
put a little plug in so the heat doesn't get to your perk too much. It just kind of stays isolated in that front little chamber. And yeah, just basically do another no blow seal by just getting that nice and even, kind of ream it out to size. Um, and one thing, you cannot put your funnel directly onto that. I put another little post in there and weld it in. Um, we'll see that process here in a minute. Uh, but that just makes it so you have something that's already melted in on the piece. Um, I've tried to do the funnel before and it's just really hard to finish that seal Yep, so want to heat up both ends. I start with the inside because this is a kind of sketchy angle to get to. Got to make my torch reach. <laughs> Just heat both sides, get them nice and soupy. Put that boy in there and just give it a nice little tack. Want to be quick with it. So if you heat up the outside, you don't want to blow the part you sucked in out especially because some parts of that is uh, a little tender so you kind of want to baby it a little bit and I just bridge that boy up and then we're just going to give him a nice full melt in with the hand torch boy well, stays nice and stable don't have to worry about it too much it's the exact same seal when you do a uh, fab eggs that little part that goes into the center you do that first before you put on the other side of the fab egg. And then you get that through the fab egg hole. But yeah, really just want to make sure it's all stable. Go around there a couple times, blow it out. Make sure everything's nice. And we're going to go right into uh, popping our holes here. So I kept this one in a little long. I'm going to show you how to do two holes. Uh, two different ways that way if you have issues with one you can always use the other you really just want to start out by piercing a hole and you just you just heat it up and you suck in you're not actually making a hole you're making like a concave divot and then I hit it on the back side and suck in just a little bit on the back side but I usually let the front do the touching so I'll, I'll wait until the front is really really close and then I'll hit the front and then just suck in and you'll see it totally slam against the other little post yep and then really you just kind of do a reverse Jesus seal at this point you just kind of heat and suck and heat and suck and it keeps thinning out that membrane pretty good on the inside um, but I take my rod right here we're gonna do the same thing we did with the inside of the cup we're basically gonna flare or not flare, but uh, pick off the glass until it gets thin on the inside. Really sketchy. You don't want to touch the side walls there. And then we do the magic little post. So heat up a little puck, touch it in there, and then you're going to break her off there. And as soon as you break that off, it should be open. You want to flash it so it doesn't crack or do anything crazy. And then just go in and melt in your sides. Kind of the same thing as a no blow seal. You're just working in that, working in the side walls until they flow together. And then you can use a reamer or whatever shaping tool you want to, to kind of shape it out properly. Usually, if you get the hole to pop as small as you can, it looks the cleanest. As soon as you start going too big, that way it gets just the sidewalls get inconsistent. Um, if you leave it smaller than your reamer and then ream it out to size, oof, that's when it looks the best for sure. Really takes the cake there. And yeah, that was how to do one of the exo holes. A little close up of it. Like I said, we're going to be doing some fastening now. Um, this is probably the fastest you'll ever see fastening done. Pretty much start with a 325 grit pad, then we're going to move on to our 600 grit pad, and then after that, move on to the 1200. 
And then after that, we will be hitting a cerium pad, which I use cerium oxide, and that gets all the scratches out, makes it beautifully, beautifully polished. Takes a lot longer than any of the other steps, that's for sure. Um, I use a faceting arm off Amazon.com, so you can find it by just typing in faceting arm. And then I have a cullet chuck attached, which the cullet chuck can have, you know, anything from, you know, one millimeter to 13 millimeters attached. So you can use your 12.7 handles. Uh, makes it really, really easy. And then we're basically just busting out that mouthpiece. Making her all nice and polished. Shing. I think the only facet I did not catch on video was the the main opal facet. All right, and then we're jumping right back in and doing the fourth hole a different way. Pretty much the same steps as the first time, except I'm going to use a tungsten pick this time to push open that membrane. That way it's just a little bit easier to grab for me instead of sticking a, a glass rod in there and trying to pick open that center um, usually I do this whenever a side gets a little too thick um, shing. see me poke a little hole and then you see me grab the end of it and then pull it out yep and kind of just repeat that process until it gets thin and then you can use the same uh, technique to kind of grab, grab that membrane with a puck and break it open. Yeah, I use that technique a lot for opening things. It just makes it so much more clean. See me tag, you wanna wait a minute, but almost immediately start moving it a little bit so it, it starts to shock it. Bink, and it opens right up. Tiny little hole, but that's what you want. Instead of a big gaping hole, you kind of just want to work it in yourself. Makes it super clean. And yeah, use gravity to kind of flow those edges together. A little bit of a shaping reamer. So I have a reamer that is just a cone. It doesn't have any, any hard lines in it or anything. And I use that a lot in a twisting motion um, to kind of round out edges just in case they need it. There's all the, the finished holes. All right, and then we're jumping right into the funnel. So I'm gonna do a quick little time lapse just hard shaping on the funnel got my measurements so i know exactly how much i'm going to blow it out to uh, but this process is it's pretty quick it takes a little bit just to get the the final shape down but always always measuring you always want to measure your work make sure you get it nice and crispy Ooh, just trying to make that nice and crisp. And we're really just going to put it right back on the piece. Really quick little section. After this, uh, we're going right to uptakes. So I pre-size my uptakes. I rip them all off and use a little piece of cardboard and get them all, draw a little Sharpie drawing on the cardboard and size everything exactly the same. Um, so all the uptakes start the same, but we're going to weld one uptake on, get it in the position we want, and usually it just kind of snaps off, bink. Then we're going to do a Jesus seal to the top. So there's some good videos on Jesus seals online, I uh, highly, highly recommend you watching them. They have... It's just a trick that will save you so much time for certain seals in the future, like Klein seals, uptakes, anything where you have double air pressure. I always, I will always use a Jesus seal. Pretty much just blow out each side wall 
until you get that membrane on the inside to get really, really thin, and then it usually pops on one side. Um, and after that, after you get that all clean, you go right to that bottom part, because usually that's not the best seal. Um, so you kind of got to be quick with the Jesus seal. Yeah, and make sure that that part doesn't crack on the bottom. Um, right now, you can see me evening out the actual uptake tube. Basically just using gravity and getting everything even to kind of slump one direction. Um, the, with the first uptake, it, it's hit or miss sometimes because the shape just kind of goes where it wants to. Um, and then afterwards, I will kind of match each uptake to each other as I'm going along. Yeah, really, really take the time to melt it that in, make it look completely even. Make sure it flows nice, make sure there's no chunks in the sidewall. And really your prep uh, kind of determines all of that. If your prep is chunky, then you're going to have some shit in your walls for sure. In this one I go a little bit quicker with the steps, um, but pretty much show all the steps still. So weld, you're going to want to do your uptake, Jesus seal, go right into your bottom after you pop that hole and get it all kind of melted in. And then go right back up to the very top, fix that Jesus seal portion, and then you really start melting it in. And yeah, this is the time, the back one's kind of easy because it doesn't have a, a twin to match. I mean, obviously try to match it to the sides as best as you can, but if the back one is a little bit different, that's totally fine. But they all look gorgeous. I actually went back and did edit the first one to match the other two. I think in this video you can kind of see all of them are now even. Now we're just right on to the joint mount tube. Thing that's going to hold the ground joint up. So put a little tab of royal jelly on there. Just going to melt that in, get it all stable. Pull off a little bit from the original joint mount tube. And just get that nice opened up for our attachment. And uh before you do your attachment, always, always, always size it up. Make sure it's going to fit in both spots because you, you don't want to start improvising in the flame too much. I mean, that's that's the nature of glass blowing, of, of glass blowers and glass blowing. But you really need to uh, make sure that things fit. And you see right here, I'm actually taking it, sizing it, bam, wonderful. So we're gonna go right into it. I do heat both the post and the open tube on the piece, um, but really just pre-warming that post. You don't want to get it too hot, and everything you'll kind of you'll kind of see the flow of it. You just got to make sure that things are ready to move when you are. And yeah, doing these is always pretty crucial. You just got to make it set up, do it nice and quick and hot and if you do this right and flow with it it flows pretty well heat your little post there and then while it's still warm fold that into your post make sure it's staying straight I weld the post in first that way it's stable and then move to the bottom section and then kind of just like the uptakes you're actually going to uh, heat up each little section and kind of droop it the way you want to go. If your glass was even to begin with, then it should not be a problem at all. Just make sure you heat it evenly on both sides and use gravity. You don't want to be heating it one way, holding it to where it droops to one side. Just even her out. Make sure she flows nicely. You don't see any ripples or anything like that. and She's good to go. We're going to get her prepped for the mouthpiece next. Um, do a little tab right there and open up my hole for the mouthpiece and there she is yep this one flows pretty quickly too I love these parts uh, to put on because it the piece just moves so much faster you really start seeing uh, progress in the finished piece uh, when you start at adding attachments and stuff. Just melt her in nice and easy. 
Always keeping stuff warm with the warming flame. And give her a nice little quick melt in that high heat. And that should even out the walls pretty, pretty good. She's looking like she's getting somewhere now. Only sketchy stuff left. We have the ground joint to do and the facet, which... Yeah, the facet was pretty sketchy on this one. I just... I'm always looking for a good holder for the facets. And it, that, that's been... That's the next million dollar idea if someone can figure out a tool that holds each kind of facet, each shape. And this one I just use a, uh, oh, what is it, Herbert Arnold tool. And it seemed to grab it pretty well and held it pretty stable. So we're going to run it. We're going to run it. And this is like one of the end pieces to the function. Usually my last step is going to be putting on the, the ground joint. Very important that it's level and straight. Other than the mouthpiece, it is also the probably the second part that you're going to be looking at the most and touching the most just because there's interaction with it, with pulling out the, the nails and stuff for the dunk tanks. Uh, just make sure everything's even and hot. Both sides are soupy. Get that baby on and then immediately go into to alignment. And once she's all aligned, bridge her up. For most of you who make rigs or any type of functional piece, you've probably put on a lot of ground joints. So just got to make sure she's nice and juicy, nice and souped. You don't want any ripples, any folds. Just straight glass to straight glass. Also, make sure your shit doesn't fall out of your ground joint. That happens sometimes. Yep, just checking the alignment up. And one thing that I don't show here before we put on the facet is I actually put a post on the back. So I put a little pre-clear post and that just makes it so when I put the facet on, it already has you know, a destination to go to. Um, we're pre-warming our holders here. And grabbing that beauty, you can see her sparkling. Oof. Right into the holders. Basically gonna prep it up a little bit. So we're gonna take some of that clear glass off. And after that, it's, it's good to go. Pretty much watching alignment is the most important part. You want your facets to line up straight. Um, I actually got hooked pretty good pulling that out of the kiln the last time. If you go back and look at that, I got I got snagged. Heat up both sides evenly. Definitely want your facet a little bit more warm, but you want the accepting glass to be pretty hot too. And then just get it on there, watching your alignment. Try not to smash it in too much. And then just go around really, really slowly and kind of just melt all that in by using that glass as a bridge, adjusting if necessary, like you see here. And give it a little twist, a little turn. But yeah, really, really just making sure that that's cooked in properly. Nice big old post on it so it's stable. Just giving her a nice look-see, making sure everything's juicy. Sometimes it's hard to see everything you need to see um, with the shop lighting. It just isn't bright enough on the piece. Uh, so this is one of my least favorite steps, but it's very, very important. Um, it's flashing off all the sodium. So sometimes when you do seals, there's sodium flare that gets all over the glass. Um, and it's usually because you didn't pre-warm it enough, but sometimes it's pretty unavoidable. Um, so you really just got to go over the whole entire piece with a nice uh, cooking flame. So something that's pretty hot, but gets the surface of the glass hot quicker than the rest. So you kind of just bake off all the sodium. And it's usually, it, it's caused by seals, doing any type of seal generally. Checking it with my big light because like I said, it's hard to see some of that sometimes You really got to make sure you eliminate it all because that's just the worst God look at that color 
Such a blinger. Yo, really excited. Thank you guys for, for watching this video with me. It's been a long time coming, long in the making, and I'm just glad that uh, we could get it done and show how to do some of my steps. And please, if you do have any questions at all, I'm pretty much an open book. Hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on YouTube, leave a comment, uh, and I'll, I'll try to help you out the best I can. We're gonna get, do the mouthpiece. This part is a little sketchy with the facets, so you really just have to watch your heat. Uh, I'm pretty successful with doing these without melting out any of the facets. Uh, you just really have to watch your heat and use a small flame on that center post. Once she rips open, well, I don't think I have it open yet. Just try to paddle it down. I usually get it to where it, it will be so I don't, so it's completely flat, it's nice and flush and polished, and then I'll pick open a tiny little hole on the top. And then use my reamer that does not have uh, the serrated edges on it, and just kind of use it as a, as a little pokey. We'll poke it in the center there. And that kind of just opens it up and makes it uh, completely round. It's so not actually reaming, but... Yeah, and she's pretty much done. Last step here is uh, taking her off. So I'll use my uh, my little grabbers, just hold her nice and steady, nice and firm, and then go into that bottom piece. And really, it's it's not that sketchy of a move. You really just got to hold onto the piece and watch the thickness on the bottom. Uh, you can pick it out to where it gets too thin, but honestly, it's pretty easy to avoid. You just just really focus on that main little part, and then I go back and forth melting it in. And that usually uh, finalizes the bottom and makes everything round. You can see right here, I'm just hitting that post. And once it's melted into the base like that, um, it's pretty stable. There's, there's nothing that's really going to happen to it. So just finishing that little bump, getting it to sink in by holding it upside down. Just enough. Not, not crazy. You're going to test the flatness of it, and she's done. Give her a little fire polish, or a, a little warming, just from touching the graphite before you put it back in the kiln. I just give it a nice little, little warming. And that's it. That's a heater. That's a heady. Truly, truly, truly thank you guys for watching, and... Uh, yeah, shoot me a subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, yeah, I'll make another video here soon. Truly appreciate y'all. We're done, baby! Woo! That was the final move of the piece. Stoked to be done. Now I'm gonna go eat some dinner. I love y'all. Stay tuned.